Hello students, welcome to Manula classes. I am Ratnakar sir. I will be teaching you your quants and logical reasoning part. Okay. So today in the question of the month in for the year 2021, we are taking a puzzle based question arrangement. Okay, a puzzle based sitting arrangement uh, which are quite uh, which are quite popular in this upcoming trend. Okay. So let us see the first question. Uh, before before that. Uh, I, I would like to stress that where admissions are going on for a one year or two year course okay you can also enroll for one year course you can go for two year course so let us see let's consider this problem this problem is given uh, as a seating arrangement okay so eight persons are given eight persons are given and there is an eight student building eight persons a b c d e f g and h they stay on a eight student building okay and we have to find out which person is staying on which building which floor okay okay so floors are numbered 1 to 8 from the bottom on to the top okay so take the first information that floors are floors are numbered floors are numbered from 1 to 8 from bottom to top okay now see in this type of seating arrangement in this type of question what we naturally do we take more than one case okay we take more than one case to actually do the arrangement we take more than one case to actually do the arrangement okay so first what we will do we will write all the information we will write all the given information in very crisp and in very uh, what you can say concise manner for which we don't have to read the passage again and again okay and then we will substitute all the information in our given table okay so flows are numbered from 1 to 8 from bottom to top okay let us move to the next slide what i will do i will i will take this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 okay let us number them the number is from bottom to top 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 okay so these are the eight floors they are talking about floors are numbered Floors are numbered 1 to 8, 1 to 8 from bottom to top. Okay. So these are the eight floors talking about, but what we will do, we will actually take more than one case. Okay, we will actually take more than one case. Let us take, let us for example take two cases. We will take two cases and we will see how we will substitute these values. Okay. Let us take two cases. Okay. Now let us first read the information. Let us first read the information. What they are saying? B stays three floors above H. B stays three floors. B stays three floors above H. Above H, who just who, who stays just above F? Who stays just above F? So B staying three floors above H. Okay. So B staying say first information. B staying three floors above h so so say on this floor h is staying say on this floor h is staying say b is staying three floors above h one two three b is staying b is staying three floors above h okay who stays just above f who stays just above f then this who is coming for h only isn't it this who is coming for h only so h is staying just above f so this is our first information okay this is our first information h is staying h is staying just above f this is our first information okay now let's move to second information g stay at a gap of two floors we will first write down all the information g stays at a gap of uh, d and g d and g d and g stays at a gap of two floors isn't it now d and g they stay at a gap of two floors that means it may happen d is here and g is here or it may happen or it may happen g is here and d is here they are saying that g and d stay at a gap of two floors that means between g and d there is a gap there are two floors there are two floors but who is above and who is below we don't know if g is above we'll put g we'll, we'll put g above if d is above we'll put d above okay okay now 
Now move to the third information. Third information they are saying that sum of E's, sum of E's and A's floor number is equal to D's floor number. Okay. Sum of E's, sum of E's and A's floor number. So sum of E's and A's floor number, this will be equal to D's floor number. Okay. This will be equal to D's floor number. Now, now next information they are saying one who stays just above A, one who stays just above A is at a gap of is a gap of two flows from E. Okay. So one who stays just above A. So this is the person, this is the person they are talking about. One who stays just above A. So this is the person who is staying just above A, but we don't know who is here. So one who stays just above A, that means this person, that means this is the one that they are talking about. Okay, this is the one that they are talking about. One who stays, one who stays just above A is at a gap of two flows from E. Now he is he is at a gap of two flows from E. He is at a gap of two flows from E. Okay. Now, now, now they are asking who lives on floor number 5. So, our first thing what we should do is to read this information and make these small notes. Okay. And we will make these small notes. Okay. And then we will put this in the arrangement and see which arrangement will finally give me the answer. Okay. So, the question they are asking is who lives on floor number 5? Who lives on floor number 5? That is what they are asking. Okay. So let us see who lives on floor number 5. See, see the first information. F and H, F and H, then a gap of 2 flows, then B. They were said, they have said that B stays 3 flows above H, who stays just above F. So first, let us try to put this arrangement. Let us try to put this arrangement. Okay. Let us try to put this arrangement. F, H after gap two of 2 flows, then B. Okay. So, F, H, it may be a possibility, a gap of two flows, then B. Okay, it, it, it can be a possibility, but we are not sure. But we are not sure that F is, F is at the bottom or F is at the second floor, third floor. That we are not sure. That we are not sure, but this is a possibility, isn't it? F, H, at a gap of two flows, B is sitting. Okay, what can be the next possibility? F, H, a gap of two flows then B is sitting. This can also be a possibility. Okay. What can be the next possibility? What can be the next possibility? So, uh, F can be sitting here, H can be sitting here and then at a gap of two flows, B is sitting here. Isn't it? And what is the fourth possibility? What will be the fourth possibility? F is sitting here, H is sitting here, a gap of two flows, B is sitting here. Okay, so these are the four possibilities which are possible. These are the four possibilities which are possible. Now what we will do? We'll eliminate. We'll eliminate the. We'll we'll we will we'll eliminate the all non-possible possibilities. Okay. So let us move to question. What they are saying? See the see the see the hint. See the hint. G D and G D and G. There should be a gap of two flows between D and G. Now see in the third information they are saying that E's floor number and A's floor number, if we add them, we should get D's floor number, isn't it? We should get D's floor number. That means definitely from this information, I can say that D is staying above E and above A, isn't it? D is staying above E and above A, isn't it? So D is staying above A, D is staying above A, that means there is a feeling that D should take a higher floor value okay there is a feeling that d should take a higher floor value because because d's floor number cannot be 1 cannot be 2 because if d's floor number is 2 then what will be a's floor number or e's floor number isn't it if a is staying on floor number 1 say and e and if a is staying on floor number 1 and e is staying on floor number 2 then d should stay on floor number 3 then d should stay on floor number 3 isn't it? If A is staying on floor number 1, 
B is staying on floor number 2, then B must stay on floor number 3, isn't it? That means D should take values which are higher, which are higher than 3, 4, 5, 6, so on. Okay. So that gives us a gut feeling that D should be D should be D should be on the upper side and H G should be on the lower side. Okay. D should be on the upper side and G should be on the lower side. Also, what they are saying? Also, they are saying that above A, the person above A, okay, the person above A, one who stays just above A, is at a gap of two floors from E. Is at a gap of two floors from E. So, the person who stays just above A is at a gap of two floors from E. Okay. Now, let us try to substitute this condition and also this condition. Okay. So, so what can what can we do? What can we do? See, what can we do? Uh, if we put, if we put there are many possibilities, you can, you can see there are many possibilities. D, D should be above and at a gap of two flows, we must put G. Isn't it? D should be above and at a gap of two flows, we must put G. So, D can be put here at a gap of two flows. Uh, G can be put here at a gap of two flows, we can put D. We can put D. Okay. Or, or D can be put here at a gap of two floors. We can put D. So, many possibilities are there. Okay. Many possibilities are there. We are not putting those possibilities right now. Now, see what they are saying. E's floor number and A's floor number is equal to D's floor number. That we have to keep in mind. And one who stays just above A is at a gap of two floors from E. Now, let us try to put this condition. Let us try to put this condition. One who stays just above A is at a gap of two floors from E. So, one who stays just above A. So, one who stays just above A is at a gap of two floors from E. So, there are two possibilities. Either A can be put here. Either A can be put here. Then, this person who stays just above A is at a gap of two floors from E. Either this condition is possible. Or, or what you can do, you can put A here. This is the person who is just above A and at a gap of two floors, you can put E. Isn't it? Isn't it? Now, you can put A here. You can put A here also. If this is the person who is just above A and at a gap of two floors, you can put E. You can put E. Or, or you can put A here. You can put A here. Then, this will be the person. This will be the person who is staying just above A and then you can put E here, isn't it? This is also a possibility. Next what you can do? Uh, you can put A here. You can put A here, then this is the person above A at a gap of two floors, you can put E. You can put E, okay. You cannot put A here. You cannot put A here, okay. Or you can put A here. If you put A here, then this is this will be the person above A at a gap of two floors, you can put E here also. Okay. So, it can take this place or this place. It can take this place or this place. Similarly, if you put A here, if you put A here, then this is the person who is above A, gap of two floors, E should be sitting. So, this is H. This is the place occupied by H. So, you cannot put A here. Now, if we put A here, then this is the person who is staying just above A and at a gap of two floors E should be sitting. Isn't it? So A can occupy this value or A can occupy this value also. Isn't it? This floor also. A this is the person above A and at a gap of two floors E is sitting. E can occupy this place. Okay. So we have exhausted all the possibilities for the last case. Isn't it? We exhausted all the possibilities for last case. Now what should now we should focus on that E's floor number plus A's floor number is equal to should be D's floor number, isn't it? E's floor number plus A's floor number should be D's floor number. That means naturally you can see that means E that means D should come above A and E. D should come above A and E. That means A cannot occupy top position. E cannot occupy top position, isn't it? E cannot occupy top position because if E's floor number is 8, if E's floor number is 8, then what will be D's floor number? 8 plus something, isn't it? That is not possible because only, because only 8 floors are there. 
so e cannot occupy this position isn't it e cannot occupy this position e cannot occupy this position okay also see elimination we can see e cannot occupy this position why because if e occupy this position okay a is on a should be on this position that means a is on floor number 3 a is on floor number 3 e is on floor number 7 3 plus 7 should be 10 that is not possible okay now if e occupy this position if e occupy this position then e is on floor number 6 a is on floor number 2 then 2 plus 6 should be 8 should be 8 so d should be on floor number 8 d should be on floor number 8 but we are seeing b is here that means this condition totally cancels out this condition is totally eliminated you should not consider this concept isn't it now see here see here if a is sitting here this is the person above a and a gap of two floors e is sitting so on floor number 5 e is sitting on floor number a a is sitting so a plus e is floor number 1 plus 5 should be 6 should be 6 isn't it should be 6 but but see on 6th floor b is sitting here on 6th floor b is sitting so that is not possible that is not possible also we have seen that a cannot occupy this position because already f is here that means this condition is also totally eliminated we are not being able to substitute a and e properly using this formula using this formula okay now now if a occupied this position then e should occupy this position isn't it but then a is floor number plus e is floor number will be 3 plus 7 10 3 plus 7 10 then what should be d's floor number d floor number cannot be 10 it should be it should be up to 8 it cannot be more than 8 isn't it so this condition is also eliminated this condition is also eliminated only this condition remains so we should focus only on this condition we should focus only on this condition see now if a is sitting here if a is sitting here then this is the person above a and at a gap of two floors e should be sitting so a is on floor number one and e is on floor number five isn't it a is on floor number one e is on floor number five one plus five is six so d should be on sixth number floor d should be on sixth number floor isn't it d should be on sixth number floor but what we have been given there should be a gap of two floors between d and g there should be a gap of two floors between d and g so if d is on this floor we cannot put g we cannot put g because a gap of two floors here f is sitting and on above we cannot see a gap of two floors that means a cannot be a cannot sit here a cannot sit here so only one possibility is there only one possibility is there a must a must be placed here a must be placed here then this is the person above a and at a gap of two floors e must be sitting e must be sitting okay this must be the proper place for e now a is floor number plus e is floor number a is floor e is a is floor number 2 e is floor number e is floor number what 6 a is floor number 2 e is floor number 6 6 plus 2 should be 8 so d's floor number should be 8 d's floor number is 8 we can put d here and this condition is satisfied we can put d here and this condition is satisfied okay now there should be a gap of two floors there should be a gap of two floors between d and g there should be a gap of two floors between d and g now we can safely put d here now we can safely put g here isn't it there should be a gap of two floors between d and g so d should be placed here d should be placed here and g should be placed here okay how many persons were given 8 a b c a b c c we have not yet substituted isn't it we have substituted d we have substituted e we have substituted f we have g h but we have not placed c any here. c any here okay so this unoccupied floor floor number one should be occupied by c so this is our correct element this is our correct element okay many cases are possible many possibilities will be there you have to you have to search them one by one you have to eliminate them one by one 
ओके सो हु लिव्स ऑन फ्लोर नंबर फाइव फ्लोर नंबर फाइव इज ऑक्यूपाइड बाई जी जी शुड बी योर आंसर फ्लोर नंबर फाइव इज ऑक्यूपाइड बाई जी जी शुड बी योर आंसर ओके क्लियर ओके Let's move to our next question. Let's move to our next question. We'll work some questions on basically cubes and dice. Okay. We'll see some questions on cubes and dice. Now see, there are there are two types of dices. One is standard dice, one is standard dice, another one is general dice. Okay. What is standard dice? When the sum of when when the sum of when the sum of any two faces when the sum of any two faces when the sum of any two faces is 7 then the dice is called is sorry is not 7 is not 7 when the sum of any two faces is not 7 okay Not seven. Then the dice is called standard dice. Then the dice is called standard dice. See here, five plus one, five plus one, six. Okay, five plus three, eight. One plus three, four. Okay. Now here we are getting seven. See here, four plus two. See the faces. Four plus two, six. Four plus one, five. Two plus one, three. So the sum is not seven here. Okay. Then, then these type of dices are called standard dice where The sum of any two faces is not seven. Okay, when the sum of any two faces is not seven, we call this type of dice as standard dice. And general dice, what are general dice? When the when the sum of when the sum of any two faces when the sum of any two faces becomes 7 when the sum of any two faces becomes what is the problem i think becomes 7 okay for example for example see 4 plus 3 here 7 4 plus 3 here is 7 so this is example of a general dice where the sum will be 7 the sum of any two faces will be 7 okay see two dices are given two dices are given these two what we will do we will not consider these two to be two different dices okay we will not consider these two to be two different dices they will be they will be taken as a same dice with different faces okay they they are the same dice they are same dice they are same dice placed differently they are actually same dice which are placed differently okay so we will take them we will take them as same dice so you don't have to check you don't have to check that oh here is coming seven if it, even if it is not coming seven this is also example of general dice okay what we will do we will consider that these two dices will not be two different dices in a, in a particular question they will get they will give you same faces they will give you same dice with different faces okay In any question, they will give you same dices with different faces. ठीक है क्वेश्चन में कभी भी अलग अलग डाइस नहीं दिया होगा क्वेश्चन में हमेशा सेम डाइस दिया होगा डिफरेंट डिफरेंट फेस का ओके यू हैव टू टेक दिस नाउ सी फॉर स्टैंडर्ड डाइस फॉर स्टैंडर्ड डाइस इफ समन आस्क वॉट इज द नंबर अपोजिट टू टू वॉट इज द नंबर अपोजिट टू टू ओके देन इन केस ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड डाइस ऑलवेज नोट ऑलवेज नोट दैट द सम ऑफ अपोजिट फेसेस that the sum of opposite faces the sum of opposite faces is always the sum of opposite faces is always 7 okay the sum of opposite faces is always 7 okay so 2 plus what should i add in 2 that it becomes 7 5 so What is opposite of two? What is the number opposite to two? Five. What is the number opposite to five? Two. Okay. Remember, these are the opposite. These are opposite numbers, not the adjacent numbers. See, five and three here are adjacent numbers. Okay. I cannot see what is opposite. What is what is the number opposite to five? I cannot see it from here. Okay. 
also see i cannot see the number which is opposite to 2 i cannot see the number which is opposite to 4 i cannot see the number which is opposite to 1 here okay then in case of standard dice where the sum of any two adjacent faces is not 7 the sum of opposite faces will be 7 okay the sum of opposite faces will be 7 okay okay so if i if someone asks what is the number opposite to 1 here what i will say oh, 6 because 1 plus 6 will be 7 what is the number opposite to 3 here what i will say 4 because 3 plus 4 will be 7 what is the number opposite to 5 here 5 here we have just we have just calculated 2 okay so first what we have to do pehle hame kya karna hai pehle hame check karna hai ki hame jo dice diya hai the dice which we have been given is a standard dice or a general dice and then we should proceed okay now come to general dice where the sum of any two adjacent faces write down adjacent faces adjacent faces adjacent matlab agal bagal where the sum of any two adjacent faces becomes 7 then there are two cases there are two cases which are possible first case first case when only one number is common okay first case when only one number is common say here the numbers are given 1 3 2 and here 1 5 6 okay so one number one is common one number one is common so in this type of case what we will do we will see we will we will write all the numbers in the clockwise direction we will write all the numbers in the clockwise direction starting from the given number 1 okay starting from the given number 1 starting from the given number 1 so what should we do we should write all the numbers from in the clockwise direction clock moves in this direction isn't it clock moves in this direction we should write all the numbers in the clockwise direction starting from the number which is common so see 1 1 after 1 we should write 2 after 1 we should write 2 after 2 we should write 3 always in the clockwise direction this is clockwise direction this is anti clockwise direction okay we should not put it in anti clockwise direction we should put it in clockwise direction always next this number is common one place this one below this one place this one below this one okay place this one below this one then what is the number after one in clockwise direction six what is our what comes after six five five that means two and six will be opposite here three and five will be opposite here which number is remaining which number is not here four in a dice there are six numbers one two three four five six isn't it we are seeing one two three five and six but not four that means four should occupy this position that means if they are asking what is the number opposite to one four what is the number opposite to four one okay if they are asking what is the number opposite to two we will say six what is the number opposite to six two and here what is the number opposite to three five what is the number opposite to 5? 3. Remember, this is a case of general dice. That means, first you have to check the sum of any two adjacent faces should become 7. See here? See here? 3 plus 1, 2, 2 plus 3, 5, 3 plus 1, 4. It is not becoming 7 here. But here you can see 6 plus 1, 7. 6 plus 1, 7. So, this is a general dice case. So, this is a case of general dice. Okay. So, this is a case of general dice and then we will consider this problem when only one number is common now see a case where two numbers are common where two numbers are common see first this is a this is a standard dice or a general dice see 5 plus 2 is 7 here 5 plus 2 is 7 here in the first dice that means it is a general dice first you have to check this is which dice standard dice or general dice okay so this is a general dice this is a general dice this is case number 2 because two numbers are common see 5 is common 5 is common 5 here 5 is here 5 is here and also and also 1 is common and also 1 is common okay 1 is here also 1 is here also okay the remaining numbers are 2 and 4 the remaining numbers are 2 and 4 so in case second where two numbers are common in case 2 where two numbers are common we can say the number opposite to 2 is 4 the number opposite to 4 is 2 okay that means 2 is opposite to 4 and 4 is opposite to 2 rest anything we cannot see 
list anything we cannot say if they ask what is the number opposite to what is the number opposite to 5 we can be sure that it is not 2 it is not 4 okay but we cannot say exactly what is the number opposite to 5 what is the number opposite to 1 we cannot say anything okay matlab matlab agar do numbers common ho general dice case mein to bhai jo number common hai dono jo number dono common hai unhe side kar dena hai jo do uncommon number hai wo dono opposite ho jayenge जो दोनों अनकॉमन नंबर है वो दोनों ऑपोजिट हो जाएंगे जो नंबर्स कॉमन है उनके ऑपोजिट में क्या नंबर है हम कुछ नहीं बोल सकते ओके ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट सम प्रॉब्लम्स ऑन दिस लेट्स सॉल्व सम प्रॉब्लम ऑन दिस फर्स्ट प्रॉब्लम फाइंड द नंबर ऑपोजिट टू 4 फाइंड द नंबर ऑपोजिट टू 4 दे आर आस्किंग ओके सो फर्स्ट यू हैव टू सी इफ इट इज अ जनरल डाइस और अ स्टैंडर्ड डाइस इज अ जनरल डाइस और अ स्टैंडर्ड डाइस दैट यू हैव टू सी so what they are saying see 5 plus 2 is 7 5 plus 2 is 7 here that that means this is a general dice case this is a general dice case what we have to do we have seen that in general dice case there were two cases when only one number is common or when two numbers are common isn't it so so we have to see 2 6 5 1 5 4 that means only one common number is there 5 only one common number is there 5 so what we will do we will write 5 take the first tiles write all the numbers in the clockwise direction 5 after 6 after 5 6 will come and 6 after clockwise direction if we move 2 will come this is in the first tiles in second dice write 5 move clockwise 1 will come and then after after 1 4 will come so what is the number opposite to 4 what is the number opposite to 4? 2. What is the number opposite to 4? The number opposite to 4 is 2. Okay. The number opposite to 4 is 2. Okay. Clear? I hope this is clear. Consider one more question. Consider one more question. Find the number opposite to 6. So, we have to that this is not a dice. 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 This is different different cases. Okay. These are not different dices, they are cases of same dice. Okay. So first thing you have to check, it is a general dice or a standard dice. It will be a standard dice if sum of any two adjacent faces is not 7. It will be a general dice if sum of any two adjacent faces become 7. Okay. So see here, 6 plus 3, 9, 3 plus 2, 5, 6 plus 2, 8, it is not becoming 7. 6 plus 2, 8, 6 plus 4, 10, 2 plus 4, 6, it is also not becoming 7. 5 plus 6, 11, 5 plus 4, 9, 6 plus 4, 10 it is also not becoming 7. 1 plus 4, 5, 1 plus 2, 3, 4 plus 2, 6. So, the sum anywhere is not 7. The sum of any two faces anywhere is not 7. That means this is an example of standard dice. This is an example of standard dice. Okay. This is an example of standard dice. In standard dice, what we know? That the sum of opposite faces should become 7. Sum of opposite faces should become 7. So, what is the number opposite to 6? What is the number opposite to 6? What we should add in 6 to become 7? 1. 1. In case of standard dice, the number, yeah, let's write it like this. Let's write it like this. The sum of the numbers, the sum of the numbers, the sum of the numbers in opposites in opposites should be 7 the sum of the numbers in opposites should be 7 okay so this completes our today's class thank you thank you so much